Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse and today we have a 3D printer that heaps of you guys have been requesting. That's right, this is the CraftBot Plus. So when Craft Unique got in touch with me a little while ago asking me if I was interested in reviewing their printer, to be honest, I hadn't really heard much about it, but it seems it's actually quite a popular printer. So basically a little bit of back history, the CraftBot original was crowdfunded through Indiegogo in 2014 and they did really quite well. And in 2016, it turns out that the CraftBot is one of the top picks. It's actually the, the top budget pick in 2016 on 3D Hubs. So that's pretty impressive. But how does it perform? Well, let's jump right in. Welcome back guys. So that's right, this is the CraftBot Plus from Craft Unique. And the really cool thing about Craft Unique is they're from Budapest in Hungary, which is probably why they're called Craft Unique. And as I said, this machine won best of budget 2016 on 3D hubs. A little bit about the specs, it has a print volume of 250 millimeters by 200 by 200, which is fairly standard for a machine of this size. It can print on a layer resolution down to 100 micron, although you can actually set any number you like into the slicing software, so that's kind of an arbitrary number. It has a heated build plate, which is aluminium, with a removable plate as well, which is pretty cool, more on that later. And in terms of print speed, they say it can do 50 to 200 millimeters per second, but in my testing, I only went up to 100. I didn't want to push it any further. 100 seemed to be fast enough. And in terms of weight, this machine weighs 14 kilos, which is actually pretty heavy and for its size it feels quite dense and extremely rigid and solid so I wasn't too worried about this machine when I'm carrying it around and I think if I dropped it on my foot my foot would come off worse than the machine would but I wouldn't recommend that anyway let's look at how it's constructed so the CraftBot Plus is all sheet metal and CNC components there is pretty much very little injection molded components in here and certainly no 3d printed components at all, none in sight, which is awesome and really quite an admirable approach because even machines like the UpBox still have 3D printed components. The CraftBot Plus is run off NEMA 17 stepper motors and those stepper motors have Astra Sign dampeners on them, which is really nice, so good job guys. It has an HBOT configuration driving the X and Y axes, which means there's two stepper motors which are tied together with a very long uh, timing belt and it works quite well. It has very, very thick Z rods, I mean, these are 12 mil, I believe, 12 mil Z rods, which is super overkill. And it has a very unique Z screw coupler called an Oldham coupler, which helps to eliminate a lot of uh, sort of Z axis wobble you might get on machines like this. Although more on that in a little bit. G code can be loaded via the included USB drive, which is tiny by the way, and I sort of lost the top cover somehow. Or you can tether it to your computer via their software but I only tested this unit using the, the G-code on the USB because it's, it's quite easy to do. So the CraftBot Plus is designed to run with Craftware, which is Craft Unique's very own slicing software. You might remember I tested it out in my slicer showdown not too long ago, and it does remain one of my most highly recommended free slicing programs because it offers customized, customizable uh, manual support structures and a very slick, fast interface. But you can actually use any slicer with the CraftBot Plus, and similarly, you can use Craftware on pretty much any other printer. It just spits out standard G-code. Now that build plate. So, a little bit of a backstory. I've got experience with many other machines with this style of cantilevered bed, like the MakerBot replicators, Flashforge Dreamer, and my biggest complaint has always been the fact that you spend ages leveling it, getting your print to stick down really well, and then after the print, you have to hack at it with a spatula to get it off, which throws the whole bed out of alignment. And it's a little bit silly. Now, yes, I know the fifth gen replicators bed is removable, but it's not a heated bed, which is a very poor trade-off in my opinion. Craft Unique's approach to this problem is both simple and ingenious. The heated bed simply has an additional aluminum plate above it, which secures in place with two thumb screws. You can simply whip it off the printer in seconds and remove prints away from the printer without throwing it out of level. Also be careful not to burn yourself on this bad boy because if you heat it up to ABS printing temperatures, 110 degrees on the bed, it has no problem at reaching that and maintaining it. And it, because it's aluminium, the heat transfer is phenomenal. And also it has a super thick capped on style surface pre-installed. So I'm not really much of a fan of capped on these days. I found it worked well for PLA prints and left a really nice glossy surface underneath. 
But for ABS prints, they really didn't stick at all to it in my experience and they would warp. I found applying ABS juice or even glue stick to it to the surface helped a massive amount, so I would recommend that. But personally, I think I'll swap it out for something like, like Build Tag because I tend to print on that sort of surface these days. Like any other open frame 3D printer though, don't expect to print massive ABS prints to the extent of the build volume on this machine without some sort of warping. It's just kind of not possible on any machine without a proper contained heated chamber, in my opinion. Like the rest of the machine, the spool holder and guide are all solid metal construction, which is hugely overkill for something like that. I would have liked to see a bigger diameter on the spool holder to hold spools a bit more, more rigidly, a bit more stable, but it's not really a big deal. You could easily print something. And I also like how you can really easily rearrange them. So for example, I prefer to put mine on the side for easier access while it was on the bench. The quick start guide, by the way, is excellent and I found it was very easy to set the machine up. The machine can be controlled through the software with USB connectivity or via the full color responsive touchscreen. Oh yes, that touchscreen. The CraftBot Plus has, in my opinion, the most responsive interface I have ever used on a 3D printer to date. It puts encoder-driven machines like the Wanhao i3 or even the Cubic on single to shame. It's so responsive, it's so easy to use, and despite the machine being from Hungary, it has an English menu that's flawless and I had no issues navigating through all the various options thanks to the very logical icons and the helpful text prompts. Bed leveling is guided, it's not automatic, and you guide, it's guided through the touchscreen, and I don't think newbies would have any problem going through it, it's quite easy to step through. And the machine comes with an included leveling card for leveling the nozzle via the three adjustment points on the bed. So yeah, as I said, there's no adjustment of the nozzle or the bed calibration automatically, it's all done manually by you, the user. While prints are running, they can be paused, filament can be changed, and the fan and light can be turned off or on. However, my single complaint about the interface is the inability to tweak print settings while a print is running. This is something I've become quite used to doing on my other printers like the Wanhao i3. This means dialing in new filaments like, you know, like a new experimental ABS or experimental PLA will be more annoying because you need to use trial and error via fresh G-code rather than being able to directly tweak temperatures, feeds and speeds while a print is actually running. The CraftBot Plus uses a completely custom controller board and firmware, so it's certainly a feature I would love to see implemented in future, and I'm pretty sure it's possible to do. Loading and unloading filament through the single extruder is also quite easy. You can either release tension on the extruder and manually push it through the preheated hot end, or use the interface. Both work very well, and as I said, because the screen's so responsive, I actually found using the interface was quite nice in this machine, unlike other printers. Uh, the extruder design is pretty bare bones, but it's extremely durable. Again, sheet metal construction, which is really cool. Just don't expect to print any flexibles on it unless you print out a mod because there's quite a large gap between the gear and the, the hot end itself. But I had no problems at all printing with ABS or PLA uh, going through the hot end as stock. Alrighty, so that's an overview of the machine itself, but what about actual printing? Well, my first tests of the CraftBot were disappointing. The prints had significant Z ribbing regardless of running at 30 or 100 millimeters per second print speed. So I reached out to Craft Unique asking what was going on and to my surprise they instantly diagnosed it as a bent Z axis lead screw and sure enough looking at it closely it was bent. The poor guys have been hit with a bad batch and my machine was one of the unlucky recipients. Now this, my friends, is where support comes into play when you buy a 3D printer. In similar circumstances, I have had to send videos to companies in China, not naming names, <clears throat> Mancati, before they would even consider sending me spare parts under warranty. And in this case, Craft Unique said, yep, we can see what the problem is, we've diagnosed it, we would like to offer to send you a whole new 3D printer. No, guys, thank you very much, but just the parts will be fine, and within the week, they arrived. After fitting them, which by the way was pretty darn easy to do, wow, what a difference. So let's go through the different prints. So this is a print done after fitting the new Z screw and it is fantastic. The detail difference, this is the same G code, is just like night and day. Similarly, I did this Merchant God mask, which I got from my mini factory in the Print the World initiative, I'll put the link in the description. And this is in clear PLA, really bad quality clear PLA, PLA by the way. But uh, it's, it's fantastic, it had support all the way through it, pulled it off, and it looks awesome. 
<laughs> now, I also did my torture test, which is this here, and you can see it managed to do the columns fine, no problems there. Not printing the thin wall is, is a, an artifact of the slicer itself. And you can see that this overhang here is really quite sharp. This is because it's got very good cooling on the craft, but there's two large fans that point down at the print while it's running in a PLA mode. They turn off, obviously, when you're printing ABS. However, I did notice that Z layer accuracy is still not 100%, and I believe this is a side effect of the cantilevered bed designs. So when this machine produces rapid infills, it visibly vibrates quite a lot, which would obviously translate into the part being printed. Because of this, I don't truly believe you could run at 200 millimeters per second without a serious loss of quality. So I peaked out at 100 millimeters per second, which is still faster than most machines on the market and still perfectly fine. But I did notice it did vibrate quite a bit. Another thing I noticed about the Craftbot Plus was the noise it makes while running. Now, all 3D printers make noise, but the noises the Craftbot Plus makes are somewhat unusual. Just have a listen to this snippet. Now we've got a little bit of resonance in there, nothing unusual and a bit of a side effect of the sheet metal construction, but it can get pretty loud sometimes. There's also some weird high pitch noises, which are either from the bearings in the gantry or motor driver noises, I'm not too sure. I'm a pretty light sleeper, so I was in a room above this printer while printing and it was too noisy, unfortunately, for me to run at night time. So keep this in mind when you're deciding where you're going to put this machine. I would never really recommend having a 3D printer of any kind in your everyday workspace due to the risk of fumes while printing. But uh, speaking of workspace, if you're looking to move a 3D printer, like a machine that you can take around in the boot of your car, this is the one I would choose. It is so rock solid. The sheet metal frame means you're not gonna have any worries sticking in the boot. And there's no exposed wires just waiting to snag on something mid-transport. Like, you know, I would never dream of transporting the Cocoon Create Wanhao i3. That's, that's, that's just asking for trouble. So at a price point of a thousand bucks, the Craftbot Plus occupies an interesting space in the market. It's not the cheapest machine you can get, but it certainly is not the most expensive and with its, with its build volume, it should handle most projects you can throw at it. I found it really refreshing to work with a machine that's so well designed and thought out that each panel can be removed easily with a single Allen key wrench and because of that, servicing this machine in the future should be super easy to do. And indeed, once I figured out how to replace the Z-axis lead screw, I reckon I could probably do that in something like 10 minutes, which is pretty nuts compared to how long it takes to repair stuff on some other printers I've worked on. It's got a lovely overbuilt industrial feel to it and it's a bit noisy, even sounding a bit clunky at times, but that's kind of what I want out of a 3D printer. I want a working tool that's not pretending to be a household appliance like a Cube 3 was trying to be. So some people may be unimpressed by the single extruder design of this machine. However, my experience with dual extruders is they're really worth the build volume they, they take up. Leveling them is also a pain and the extra capabilities you get usually mostly just used for gimmicky dual color prints rather than functional support reasons. So that's just my two cents, but if you're really craving dual material printing, you'll be happy to know that the Craftbot control board has a spare port just waiting to be used for a second extruder. And I hear that the next version of Craftware is due out soon with multi-extruder support. Just something I heard on the grapevine. Full disclosure, Craft Unique sent me the Craftbot Plus to do an unbiased independent review and all opinions in this video expressed are my own. If you're interested in getting one, you can find the link in the description for all the information on where to get a Craftbot Plus from Craft Unique. So thank you so much guys for watching. If you want to see future 3D printing videos, reviews, tips, tutorials on Makers Muse, please don't forget to subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And let me know in the comments what you think about this machine. I know like heaps of you have been having your, your, trigger, your fingers on the Craftbot trigger for some time, so let me know if this video helped you any decision. And if you're interested, we now have a Patreon to help support the channel. It's completely optional, but if you're interested in checking out the perks, definitely have a look. I'll see you guys later here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Thank you.